Hello everybody, my name is Brain Bice. I'm a member of 2.83 at Upland in PA, and today I'm going to be starting a video series called First Aid Fundamentals. All right, we're going to go through all of the requirements to learn with first aid from tenderfoot rank and up until first class rank. So today's requirement we're going to go through on tenderfoot rank is requirement 4D, which is assemble a personal first aid kit to carry with you on future campouts and hikes. Tell how each item in the kit would be used. So to do that, we're going to go right on to in your book page. 108, uh, the personal first aid kit item list. So before me I've got a bunch of personal first aid kits that have everything needed um, from BSA that has everything with the checklist in it. So different examples of it, you don't have to have one set bag or pack or something like that, so you have different items for which you can have in it. So I'm going to read out the contents and then we're going to go through the kit to tell you what each content is for. So your personal first aid kit should have six latex free adhesive bandages in assorted sizes, such as band-aids uh, with invariant sizes. Two stair three by three inch gauze pads, a small roll of latex free adhesive tape, a three by six inch piece of moleskin, a small bar of soap or small bottle of alcohol based hand sanitizing gel, a small tube of triple antibiotic ointment, which is optional, a small tube of hydrocortisone cream, which is also optional, a pair of scissors, tweezers, disposable latex free gloves, CPR breathing barrier, and a pencil slash paper or a small small notebook. So we're gonna go right into this pack here. So one thing you wanna make sure of is you wanna have something that can stick out to someone that's first aid. So for this example, this kit, it has the cross and that kit has, is just red. For my indicator is that I have my scissors on the outside. So I've got my scissors right there I can use for cutting with bandages or cutting clothing to view a wound. Uh, next up in here, we've got our pencil for writing, on our, for writing on our paper. I have a pen there just as a backup writing utensil to be prepared. Next thing here, we've got our breathing barrier and for CPR. I've also got the gloves in there. So the gloves are going to protect yourself and the, C and the breathing barrier is going to be for when you're doing your breaths during CPR. You've got your hand sanitizer, which is for cleaning your hands before and after, uh, putting on your latex free gloves. Uh, for treating a patient to make sure that you're safe as well. Got your tape here. This is great for taping down your uh, gauze pads or bandages for securement. Next we have something that's optional here. This is not a tube of triple antibiotic ointment, but it's a little spray thing of Neosporin. So that would be used uh, for preventing infection on the exposed area that you're treating. Next we've got tweezers here. This can be used for pulling out the stinger of a bee sting or uh, pulling out uh, barbs, and then you can use the back end of it, which uh, for, oh, I messed it up. Uh, for when you have a tick bite, you wanna make sure that you're not pulling the tick directly out because you can leave the head in there. So this would be for nudging the tick out of your wound. Next, we've got our six bandages, or six band-aids. I've been varying sizes. Make sure you go with a good brand of band-aids because there's nothing worse than having a bad band-aid. Next here we got our moleskin. Uh, moleskin is fantastic for obviously your blisters. If you have a well-established well blister, you want to cut out a little donut-shaped hole to fit around the blister to prevent the uh, blister from popping. Next in here we have our latex-free gloves and I'd highly recommend you use nitrile gloves in case you have a patient who's allergic to vinyl or latex, something like that. The worst thing you can do for a patient is put them at more of a risk of hurting themselves. So make sure you use nitro gloves. It's gonna uh, prevent you from doing more damage to the patient. Next we have our little notepad. Uh, these things are invaluable. You carry them everywhere. Your notepad is gonna be used for writing down the date, time, name of the patient you're treating, uh, what you've done for the patient, uh, and then signing off that you've done it. This is gonna go to your scout master. If you have to do first aid on a scout, uh, take that piece of paper and give it to your scout master showing what you've done, or give it to a scout master in your troop that is first aid trained and who would be responsible for taking the role of anyone injured. Or if you have a patient who's gonna be going to the hospital, give that directly to the medics. That way they can see what you've done for the patient. So not doing that again twice. And here, uh, I don't carry three by three gauze pads. In my experience, all I carry is two by twos and four by fours. Three by threes are just in-betweens. So your two by twos can be smaller gauze pads. 
4x4 is you're gonna be your bigger gauze pads, which you're gonna be using for either uh, stopping bleeding and just for cleaning out your area. So this, that is what we've got in our personal first aid kit. Remember, don't limit it to a pack. Uh, you have a variety of sizes. Take care, be safe.